a building should represent the community. It should also represent, you know, their, the identity of the individuals in the community, their culture, you know, the history and, and the traditions. about the spark that drives you to create? Well, part of that process is um, really like the indigenous um, way is about including the community. It's all about the process. It's not about, you know, the built form yet. And, you know, it's really exciting because you go into a community and, you know, you'll sit down with elders, you'll sit down with youth, and they'll talk about, specifically the elders, about um, a memory um, and really this culture memory. And that really inspires us because when we come up with a design, you know, at IDSA, you know, we don't just come with a, you know, a plan and say, this is what you guys should use in your community as a master plan or a building. We don't do that. You know, it's all about sitting down and really listening to them. And that's how we sculpt, you know, their, um, you know, their design, their, their vision and, and, and mission. What types of challenges do you experience in this process? Everyone talks about having a consensus. How do you draw a consensus, you know, when you're meeting with community members? Mm -hmm. That's the biggest challenge for us. But what we do is we really have to um, take on this, you know, um, indigenous aspect. And the indigenous aspect is just really being calm, you know, with, you know, the community um, sitting there, you know, um, you know, being at one with, you know, the nature. And I think that's part of it is, you know, having that consensus as part of the design process is that then we can draw um, consensus with it. And pretty much everybody at the end, they'll say, yeah, you nailed it. That was the concept. That was the vision. And this is what we want, um, you know, for our community. Where do you find uh, your inspiration for this vision and your designs? All of our inspiration and, and vision really comes from, of course, that community aspect. But we also draw example, you know, draw from the environment. We do a little bit of investigation and research about really maybe the importance of the cultural and the history at that time or in the past that really brought their community, um, you know, to be. For example, one of our projects that we have is the Navajo Technical University project. We looked at the history of the Canyon de Chez and, you know, the water and we drew that and we looked at parts of, you know, how the Navajos, the, um, the four world concept of, you know, how they came to be. You know, another example would be um, Kienta Multipurpose Center. In that community, they're really well known for different rug designs. And what we did was on the exterior facade is we put these different patterns that resembled a rug pattern on the entry facade. You may not know that, but once you start looking at it and maybe really investigating the building and walking around it, um, a light bulb will go off and say, hey, I see this rug pattern. And maybe do more research about the community and say, oh yeah, they do certain types of rug, Navajo rugs. And again, that brings back that sense of community, bringing back in that culture and history. So if a non-native was gonna go in there, they can learn a little bit more about, you know, who they are, who that community is. How does the light and land inspire your creations? I had a grandmother that was um, a medicine woman and she practiced the booty way. And every morning she would say, you wake up early in the morning she says, you wake up before the sun, that, you know, you go run, you know, towards the east. So the inspiration is that, you know, you've got the light that comes up, um, you know, that brings the day. And then, you know, you have the middle of, of the afternoon where you do appreciate, you know, all the things that you've done and your accomplishments. And then you end your day with, you know, the night. 
everything that you know that inspires our design you know comes from that you know having that connection to you know mother earth and father sky which is really um, in our our prayers as well you greet the sun in the morning and then you know follow it throughout the day and in the evening and is this how the head start building is situated yes okay. yep yep we have a project for um, a head start um, set ya the English version is Standing Rock. And what we did was we orientated the building in a way that faced east, you can enter it, but you know, the, end, the, the kids that are in there can learn you know, about how you enter the building, you know, the way that you walk into a Hogan. But again, we're not doing a little interpretation of the Hogan, but we want to have that connection so that the students are in there, that they can start to learn a little bit about, you know, the directions, you know, and how you enter. Um, and I think it's important because at that age, you know, that's when they're going to be learning their culture and their history. And I think that's the, probably the ideal age, you know, to start people thinking about, you know, their culture, um, their traditions and, and their language. So what drives you personally? What drives you every day? What do you love about the art form? What drives me today is working with my people. You know, being a Navajo woman and going back to my community, you know, brings joy in me because that's who I, that's who I am. Um, and this is, th these are my people and working with them is um, something I like to do because I learn something every day from, you know, these individuals from different communities and also learning different cultures because we don't just specifically work for Navajo, we also work for other, um, you know, other tribes and, you know, learning their culture. And what I've learned is that a lot of these um, different tribes and, and, you know, indigenous people really actually say, they, they actually share the same values of the, in this indigenous worldview. And, um, and it, that's what inspires me. It's like, well, we can um, make our communities better. You know, we can really design a building, you know, that really is going to be influenced by our people and how we can um, save our culture and our language and our traditions. I love working with my staff. I love working with the communities and, you know, really listening to the stories. And those stories is what drives our concepts. Mm -hmm. And it's so important for the communities and the individuals to tell their story. And sometimes they don't get to tell their story. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that we do something in the design that preserves that within the community. Yeah, and just working with the people, I mean, it's, um, it's great. I think being an architect, you, you definitely have to be a people person. You gotta listen to them.